like half a year plus. Um, let me reintroduce myself, I guess, because it's been so long. My name's Mary. Um, former carb addict, I guess. Um, yeah, so I am a videoed my I haven't taped myself for any YouTube stuff in a long time. So I apologize how bad this might be. Um but I have just been thinking about this for a while and just wanted to film something. More of like a reintroduction cuz I have a lot of ideas for videos and I want to get them out, but I feel like I need to reintroduce myself to people that might not know me, that might be new, whatever. So, I apologize while I drink some drink out of my awesome cup. Um, I'm Mary and I'm a sugar skull fiend as well. Alright. So, I am 36 years old. Um, pro type 2 diabetic still, diagnosed. Um, but may have reversed it with the help of the ketogenic diet and exercise. Um, so I guess my story that I want to tell starts in 2016 when I was diagnosed with my... When I found out I was diabetic. Um, so. Alright. I'm reading my. What I have over here. That I might look at. Is my. Um, I had set up a blog. A blog. A few years back. That I didn't go anywhere with. Because I wanted to tell my story. But. I started a YouTube channel, and then I didn't do anything, but I've been really on Instagram a lot, so mainly Instagram is where to find me. Um, I'm working Fireball and everything, as it says right there. So, excuse the mess behind me. Yeah. So. In, uh, in, um... 2016, I had these episodes of racing, of my heart racing a little, that I didn't really pay any attention to, like, once or twice. They did a little. I was fine. I thought I was fine. So I didn't do anything about it. One day, I was on my way to work. Um, I worked at Hobby Lobby for five years, helped open the store and close the store. So, yeah, that happened. Yeah. I now have a new job. People that have seen me before. I have a new job. Whatever. Okay. So, let's go on. Um, on my way to Hobby Lobby for a morning shift, I almost get there. My heart starts racing. Um, ended up leaving work early because my heart just didn't stop racing like I had before. Um, came home. Rested, thought it would get better. Slept overnight downstairs because I didn't know if maybe I was going to have to go to the bathroom. Thought maybe period. Thought, didn't know what was going on. Um, it was one of the stupidest things I've ever done. If your heart is doing anything, go to the doctor. Because you, you, know, you can die. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I have so much more stuff that happened before that. That was just stressors in my life. Dealt with three family members dying within two or three months. Direct family members. Um, my first person that passed away was my grandmother on my dad's side. And then my aunt, no, my aunt on my mom's side passed away first. On Mother's Day. My grandmother, right? 
Yep, my grandmother on my dad's side passed away. Um... Father's Day weekend. And then my aunt on my father's side passed away. And I don't remember when she passed away. Um, she passed away in August. Funeral was happening later. So. Go back to that day where my heart was racing and went home from work. Went home from work, laid down overnight, had the same heart racing, was fine. Talked to my mom on the phone. She told me how to check my heart rate. We didn't think I did it right, so we were like, yeah, it's fine. Um, ended up going to urgent care the next day because I did not feel better. The minute I said heart, they were like, no, we don't deal with that. You have to go to the ER. They let me drive myself to the ER, um, which when I tell people that, they can't believe that, and uh, went to the ER, almost didn't go in, but was convinced by my sister and my boyfriend to go in. Went in. I got all checked in. They checked my heart rate. I got into a room pretty quick. Everything else was fine. Heart rate, though, my average was around 180 to 200 beats a minute. Normal is 70 for a normal human. 70-ish. Mine was, that was what it was for a day and a half. It was a 180 to 200. So, they had taken blood samples and stuff, um, which is a big deal leading up. Um, ended up, they needed to stop my heart and restart it in order to, well, they had to stop my heart and they were hoping it would automatically restart. <laughs> they got hard reboot um, on a computer. Like, control, delete, control, delete. I got control, it deleted. Um, they tried it with a strong breathing through a thing to try to get it go down. Didn't work. So, they injected me right here with this stuff called adenosine. It stopped my heart for half a second. It was the weirdest feeling in the world. Everything compressed, and then everything was fine. Sorry about that. Everything compressed, everything loosened, and that was fine. My heart went back to normal. Went from the machine beeping like insane, where they had to mute it because it was so fast, to everything fine. So, and my sister was with me. When this happened, thank God. Um, my sister is amazing. So, they do another EKG. There's a little blip in it, so they were going to hold me overnight because of that. And Wayne gets there. Wayne had no idea that my heart got restarted until I told him when we got there. Wayne is my boyfriend. We just celebrated 18 years together. I know. Um, half my life. <laughs> um, I said to Wayne, I'm like, you know what sounds good? A milkshake. For McDonald's. Sounds delicious. The nurse had been in um, and heard that. Went out came back in and what she said basically changed my life and said the milkshake is not a good idea probably your sugar is in the 600s you're diabetic and basically I got talked to and got told you have type 2 diabetes we were going to admit you anyway for the heart blip but now we're admitting you for that and because you need to get it under control. My A1C was 9.1 at the time. Um, I think it was... Not so what I had was... What happened with my hair was PSVT. Um, proximal supraventricular 
tachycardia. Your heartbeat goes blah, blah, blah. It goes crazy. Um, haven't had that issue since. So, and I still go to the doctor for it. So they didn't officially tell me I had type 2 diabetes until I got up to my room the next day. I was more worried about my heart until they came in and said, well, we got the PSVT under control, but now your sugar is out of control and you are going to stay here. I went in on a Saturday. I wasn't released till Monday till I could see the diabetes educator. And I have a whole thing about the edu yeah, the ADA. Like, everybody was really good I dealt with to the m most part. Um, and I got lucky of when I went in to the hospital and who was there and all this stuff. I'm in the hospital. They're teaching me how to use the needles. I'm a person that's afraid of needles. So I ended up with a disease that I had to stick myself with needles multiple times a day to make sure I didn't die. Um, the way I look at things, you only get one restart. You're only supposed to get one restart. You know, easier on your body. Doctors tell you to do something, you do it. To the most part. Um, what I'm saying will make sense about the doctors and eh, my feeling. Um, so, uh, stayed all day Sunday, had to do the insulin. They put me on two different kinds of insulin. Um, I got my blood meter there. On my blood glucose reader there. That I still use. Um, and thank God I had insurance. I almost didn't go because I was still in the mindset of the hospital's going to cost you a million dollars. Had I not got it, I would have died. Basically, it's that. Um, I went into the doctor... I went into the hospital, got that, learned how to inject, how to test my sugar, how to, but they showed my boyfriend how to change, the thing that, one of the things I remember that annoyed me, they showed my boyfriend how to change the, the lancet in my checker where you poke yourself, and not me. Tell the person that's going to have to freaking do it, don't tell my boyfriend. You know, anxiety levels get a little high. Um, it was so long ago. This is like a lifetime ago I'm telling you about. So, got inject, uh, learned how to do injections in my stomach with a long lasting insulin and a short term insulin. So, I'd check my sugar. The long term, the long lasting insulin I did no matter what, and the levels changed throughout my treatment. Uh, short term was if my number was high and I had to bring it down because you don't want to have a spike ever. Um, so I ended up, uh, Monday morning talking to the educator. They taught me about the diet, how many carbs, how many times a day, basic. I've gone away from that, but I am very grateful that I had that conversation and that I was forced to stay there. And have that conversation. Um, it taught my... Because my boyfriend was there with me. He's so awesome. Had we not listened to that advice, I might be dead. Whatever. I don't even want to think... Of, like, I do want to think about what would have happened, but I don't. I try not to think that way. So, ended up going to the hospital... Uh, talking to the educator. Educator teaching me stuff. They release me. I'm out of the hospital. So I have set up an appointment with the heart. By the time I had left the hospital, I had had an echocardiogram, learned how to do the diabetes stuff, a bunch of stuff, and got put on a ton of pills. Um, Lisinopril, Torvastatin, a baby aspirin. Well, they all came within the next few weeks of going to the doctor because once you get released from the hospital, it's not over you with yet. You have to go to the doctor every freaking week for the next... Because they don't want to put you on everything at once. But they'll make you stay on it forever. Sorry. Jumping ahead. Um, so, had appointments set up with my endocrinologist, educator, and a nutritionist. At the diabetes 
clinic and the heart doctor I had. Um, and my primary. Tons of appointments. I followed the diet to a T. We donated a ton of stuff that was here that we couldn't eat, like pasta. Once we figured out the serving size and it wasn't worth it, we donated it. Donated a ton of stuff. Um, we basically cleaned out our house for our new life. I'm so lucky he did it with me because otherwise I don't know what I would have done. Um, sorry. I've had two, I've had three coffees today and I'm still yawning. So, basically the timeline goes, I'm really working. I wasn't in the gym yet, but I did have an elliptical here, so I would use that like every day. Um, I did that until I got a gym membership and I followed the diet, like literally 30 to 45 carbs a meal and 15 carbs a snack. All right. That doesn't sound too bad. It is. It actually is. It's pretty bad. Um, I was on all the pills and all the diabetes stuff. I was on two insulins at the time. And a metformin. Oh, yeah, metformin, too, to lower your sugar, too. Three things to lower sugar. Um, took all my pills regular, the way I was supposed to. Took all the medicine. Slowly, by every um, visit, and I was going, I think, every... Every few weeks to the endocrinologist and to the nutritionist and stuff. Um, and my numbers kept getting better and better and better. Slowly got taken off the fast acting, got taken off the metformin, and got taken... I forget the order, but I am off all diabetes medication, all sugar-controlling medications. Um, and I was off of them before... It took me a year. I did the ADA diet for a year. I'm, like, reading my... I did the ADA diet for a year and a half until 2018. Um, 30 to 45 carbs a meal with some snacks. After every meal, I would get tired doing that many carbs. Um... I started researching stuff. And I came across the ketogenic diet, probably from a recipe. And it was probably from Keto Connect. Because um, I probably was craving something and wanted to make a recipe. And I found them. And then I researched keto. And I researched the science, a little bit of it. And I thought, okay. Asked my nutritionist about it was told, do not do it. It's a horrible diet. I usually didn't go against my doctor's wishes, but I had already slowly started to wean down the amount of carbs I was eating a meal. And I had to write it down, and I was like, well, it's working for me. So I was eating... I had slowly gone from the 30 to 45 a meal to the 20 a meal. While I was at that 20 a meal in December, I fell asleep at the wheel on a bridge coming home from my parents after eating a tuna fish sandwich for dinner. Half a second, woke up, didn't get an accident, luckily. The bridge turns, too, and it was winter. Everything that could have gone bad didn't, but it woke me up. From that minute on, because I had been, after every time I ate, I would get fuzzy and tired. And I was off all pills. And I was not going back on medication. That was one thing I always wanted to not do was have to rely on medication. It took me, I started in the gym with Wayne, lifting weights and doing cardio. Um, so I'm doing strength training. I've been doing strength training and cardio the whole time. Um, I started with that in November 2016 because anytime fitness opened up in our town. It might have been December 1st. No, it was December 1st because they were doing a deal. So December 1st, 2016, I started. 
Um, I decided, after falling asleep at the wheel, that's enough. I'm going to try this keto thing. And I had already started weaning my carbs down. So I don't think I went through the keto flu like other people had. So I weaned down to the recommended 20 carbs a day. And I had already been educated on net carbs and stuff, so I had a head start compared to other people just starting keto. Um, and I upped my fats. Like, I literally looked up everything. I did it without Wayne. Wayne was doing lower carbs still, like, doing the higher count. He was okay with it. My body already had been damaged. And became, as I put, diabetes. This is my definition of diabetes. You are allergic to carbs. How basic is that? If you think of it that way, if you have an allergy to peanuts, you stay away from peanuts. If you have an allergy to freaking silicone gloves, the stuff in the gloves, you stay away from that. If you're allergic to anything, you stay away from it. If it gives you an adverse reaction, you stay away from it. I had adverse effects from carbs. And you can't think of it as sugar. It is carbs. Carbs and sugar in your system and all that fun stuff. I have an adverse effect from carbs. My body did not for years, but there are signs looking back that I should have probably looked at and taken better care of myself. I get very mad at myself for not taking my care of myself for my entire life up until that point where I got restarted. But I've taken the reins on my health and I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm in the best health of my life. But without my nutritionist knowing it, I lowered my carbs. And I started keto. I didn't get tired again. I had more energy. I just felt better. Um, and, you're, you know, your diet's always evolving. And I don't like to call it a diet. It's a way of eating, lifestyle, whatever. But your diet is how you eat. So your diet's always evolving, always changing. So this has changed a few times. I've put in intermittent fasting where you only eat for a certain amount of hours and then you fast or do not eat for another amount of hours. Basically, if you're the reason breakfast is called breakfast is because you're breaking your fast. If you have dinner at 6 or 7 and then you don't eat until breakfast the next day, you fasted that 12 hours or so. Your body goes through things and heals and all that fun stuff. At a certain amount, you know, it's good for you. Your sugar isn't spiking all the time, which you're doing the 30 to 45 carbs, your body's spiking. Um, but if you rely on medicine to save it, your body's not doing it itself, which is another point I'm going to get to in another video, I think. Sorry if this is all scatterbrained. I'm just trying to get my basic story across to where I am right now, because my where I am now is different than it was a year ago. Um. A year ago, I'll get in, yeah. So I started keto 2018. I have now been on the ketogenic diet for two years. Straight two years. I did not ever have a cheat meal. I've never had a cheat meal. Um, The most cheat meal I'll have is off some extra, like, low-carb stuff, which is still cheating to me. Um... Or I'll have something like sugar-free Russell Stovers, which I try to, I don't want to probably eat those again. Um, they kick me out of ketosis, and they make your stomach upset. Never fun. Don't eat a whole bag by yourself of any of that sugar-free candy. Any of it. Um, like Lily's chocolate's okay. That keeps me on track right now for what I'm doing right now. Um... So, been doing keto. It's changed. I've changed my fasting windows and whatever, and I noticed a change, and I got hurt during that time. Um, I pulled this muscle in my right arm, my right neck, that connects from, look at that bald spot, here 
up in my neck where it connects to my skull, down my arm, in the back. My trap. So I pulled that, um, and that was a big, long thing last two years ago. Right when everything happened. Oh, yeah, that was right when everything happened, yeah. Man, I this picture of me. There's one thing about... You can see it. I just see, like, my change. <laughs> my A1C stayed around a four since for three years, three and a half years now. Those numbers are not diabetic numbers. I'm fighting to get myself off of the cholesterol pill and the blood pressure pill. I had low blood, bl low blood pressure when I started this. The only reason they put you on it is to help filter. I'm not eating the stuff that it would need to filter. So therefore, I don't think I need it. It makes sense. I don't eat out anymore. I don't eat fast food anymore. The only fast food I'll eat is Chipotle or Five Guys. That's it for fast food. And that's what I consider fast food. I will go out to eat at like Applebee's and stuff. I'll get steak or get... Usually I go steak or burger. It's easy. Or chicken if I can figure it out. Um... But that's where I'm at. Right now, I, I started around 200 pounds. My heaviest, I was 250. Um, at least. And doesn't do your body good. I was on the road with wrestling. I was in wrestling for... I'm still in wrestling. But I was on the road with wrestling and production from 2003. Technically 2002. So 2002 up until... December 2013. Um, did not do well. Did not treat my body well. Was sitting in a car for 18 hours at a time. Not caring what I ate. And I always got flack. Like Wayne and I always got flack for it. Um, which we should have. Like now I don't like being that person. But I'm that person now. And I'm working on that. Of being the non-judgy person. But when I know stuff. Stuff is unhealthy. It's hard not to. Um, but I started at 200 when I got my heart restarted. I have gone up and down. As my friend Ke Joni at Keto Diamond, um, weight loss is not a straight line. Ups and downs, up and down. Um, so two years ago, mid-2008, 18. I was down to 147. But I believe it's right when I started keto and I wasn't fasting as much as I am now. But I also wasn't doing the heavy weight training. There's so m so that was the lowest I've gotten down to. That I remember is 147. Right now I'm sitting at one this morning. I weighed in at 168.8, I believe. Um I will try to keep track of that. But uh, that number is not everything to me. It's so hard to not believe my number, that number, isn't everything. The diabetes doctor is stuck on BMI charts, which are outdated and a joke. Do not live by your BMI. Everybody's body composition is different. You can weigh, I weigh 168, my 168 is going to be different than the next person's 168. The person next to me could be 5'10 and weigh 168, and that's going to be a different body composition than my 168. And the person next to me could be the same height and weigh the same, but they could have 168 pounds of fat with no muscle. And you're sitting with me that's gaining muscle because I'm doing more muscle training now along with fasted I do fasted cardio every morning along with strength training at night with some more cardio mixed in I'm a workout machine and I love it I'm addicted to the gym I love it um but just that's where I'm at I haven't gone to the endocrinologist because I thought they said they were going to call me for an appointment last year I was mistaken. I was supposed to call them, even though they're my doctor, and I feel like they should have to call me if diabetes is so life-threatening. It is to certain people. 
that I know when even the whole time I was there, they basically were like, you have the best A1C in the entire clinic. You probably have a better A1C than the people that worked there did, which is true. Um, my number is not a normal number for people, especially after they've almost died with this, you know, disease of being allergic to carbs. Um, so I need to get back. I need to get my blood work done. I haven't gotten that done this year because I have not needed to go to the doctor. I've been sick a few times. Like I had the flu, like I was sick. I went to the doctor, like normal stuff. I have to set up an appointment with my primary who is completely behind me. He's like, whatever you're doing is working. It's working. And he's at him and the nurse that's there. I've known them my whole life. They've been my doctor since I was six. And the same people have worked there the whole time. And actually the nurse is one of my friend's mothers. So I know her. Um, she agrees with me. If I don't need the pill, my numbers, my cholesterol and everything are low end of good. Low end of good. If they were lower, it would be the worry level. Like my cholesterol is low. My blood pressure is low. Everything is low. Um, I don't feel the need for me to be on these pills anymore. So why not try to get up off them? That step is supposed to be a gestational. I, w I had a test in and I never got it done of a gestational diabetes test. I'm not pregnant and I do not plan on it like ever. Just my preference. Um, I just feel they need to basically have me ingest whatever it is. I think it's 70 grams or 80 grams of carbs, pure glucose, in one sitting. See what my body does. So I basically have to poison myself in order to prove that I'm over diabetes. Instead of just saying, oh, your numbers are really good. You've done everything. You've completely changed your lifestyle. You've changed your life. Let's take you off these things that you don't need. Um, and see what your body does. I never did that test. It scared the crap out of me. It's still the idea of it scares me. Like, why? Why poison myself? That's what I consider it. Even my primary said, you're probably going to get sick off it. You're probably going to throw up. Because it tastes like Coke, but it's very sickly sweet. Which I used to be a person that could eat. I can still eat. I love sweets. I love sweet stuff. That's my downfall. That's my weakness. But that much all at one time and that I'm just afraid of what it's going to do to me because of how I ended up in the hospital. Um, so I basically need... I've needed a day where I can do this and then have Wayne, my boyfriend, with me to like be there in case anything happened i that's how i feel if i get the test done i'm able to go around my endocrinologist and just be like hey primary can i just get off these i have to set him an appointment with him that's where i was going to get my annual blood work done because i have not had it done yet because usually the endocrinologist would set that up but i need to get it done soon because i have an appointment with my person, my person soon, my uh, heart doctor soon. I only see him because I had the one event that sent me to the hospital and I haven't had one since. My primary and I basically agree. It was my body yelling at me, get yourself to the freaking hospital or you're going to die if you don't go to the hospital. And it scared me and that's, I don't understand people that can have such scary things happen to them because of a disease that's manageable if you treat it right. I don't understand how they can just keep doing bad things. There are certain people I know in my life that I don't understand. If, I don't know. Even if they went by this, the American Diabetic Association diet, it would be better than what they're doing. 
That just scares me. Um, but that's, I think that's where I'm at. So right now, I literally, from watching something yesterday, um, link below will be a bunch of channels I watch and a bunch of Instagram stuff, uh, for information for you guys about places to check out, where I get information, who I watch, just fun stuff, links to my stuff, um, link to Wayne and I stuff, because we have stuff, cheap plug, um, do stuff with us, it's us, um, but I, because of a video I watched from Goody Beats, he'll be linked below. He has a trainer for a cut he's doing. And uh, watching that video, I thought of a lot. I had not tracked my food and my fitness pal in a while, and I did yesterday. Didn't realize how few calories I was eating. And if I think about it in another video, I will talk about calories and as much as what I know. This is all what I know. I'm not a doctor. I am i don't play one on TV. I don't play one on the internet. I don't play one anywhere. Um, I just thought of something I can't say. Not even in the bedroom do I play a doctor. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. Um, I, I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you a look at my neck. Kadoosh. Kadoosh. I've gotten jacked. Just saying. Um. Watching him, his doc, his guy talk made me track my food and then realize, oh, crap, you need to eat more. Like yesterday I did. Um, today I'm doing way better because I'm eating different stuff than I did yesterday. But it's all a process again. I'm relearning. Like you're always learning for everything in your life. And you learn from different people and you just have to take the situation and try to learn from it. And not get discouraged from it. It's very easy to get discouraged, but don't. Strive for progress, not perfection. It sounds cheesy, but it's as true as it can be. Especially when you're trying on the floor right there to do a new workout. And you want to die right there. But you don't. You just keep going and you do the best you can. And you just, next time it'll be better. Like, that's all you can do. Next time you're going to do that extra rep. You're going to do that extra weight. Like every week right now, I've been upping my weight and my weight training. Like the last three weeks, I've been doing a different set. I used to do a two-day split in my gym stuff with Wayne and I. We did upper body on Tuesdays, lower body on Thursday. Now we are doing uh, the basic, I think it's a basic split. Back biceps Monday along with some abs, which I do. Um, and I'm doing fasted cardio every morning. Um, but weight training, it's that. And then chest and triceps Tuesday. Wednesday's our repair rest day. I do Zumba that day for sure at night. This is all at night is when we do our weight, our lifting. Thursdays is shoulders and probably more abs, um, cause you can do abs more. And then Friday is leg day. Those two can either be combined, which I did last week or separate days, you know, and sometimes if we have a show Friday, we'll do Saturdays like day. Or combine. Whatever we have to do. You just make it work for what you can do. Um, but every single week, I've done five extra pounds on my weight. And I'm very proud of that. Um, like, I'm getting stronger. And I, uh, my motto is strong, not skinny. That's what I've decided to live by. I don't want to be skinny mini. I want to be able to bench press that skinny mini. Or help them in a situation where they need somebody to lift something. I've always prided myself on how strong I am. I've always been a stronger girl. I always loved weight training in school. Got out of it because I couldn't afford a gym when I got out of school. Um, This is high school. I didn't go to college. I went right into wrestling. Um, So for me being strong... And, like, one of the things is being able to see my veins and being able to see my muscles right now. Like, when I work out and these veins show off, it's a sense of pride that you're working your butt off. And that you're doing it. This vein will always pop. This is where they inject me the adenosine. That's my restart point. Right there. If I ever get a tattoo, it's going there. I'm not sure what. Restart button. Something. 
I'll think of it. Who knows if I ever get a tattoo, whatever. But when this thing starts to act, it hasn't done it. It did it for the first two years. Right around August uh, 15th or so. Or August, what day was it? I have the actual day of when I went to the hospital. Saturday, August 13th, when I got injected. Around August 13th, this will start to ache. When they injected, the needle scraped a little bit of the uh, vein. So I had to heal, so it hurt. So I had to wear a wrist, I had to wear um, a bandage. I found out because I thought it was my wrist just screwed up because the way I had to hold it. I talked to my doctor and he said they probably scratched it when they went in. And that's what happens. But I just, I've seen so much stuff and people doing things and wanted to talk about topics that I felt it was time to restart this channel. I may start posting workout stuff again. I don't know. Um, I just wanted to reintroduce myself. Sorry it's been such a long video. Um, I'll see if I can edit anything out, but I don't think I can. But this is my story. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. Um, message me on, um, if you look up Mercury Firewall, basically everywhere you'll find me. Um, message me. Uh, yeah, leave a comment below. Um, yeah. This is where I'm at. I have to get my A1C check, but at last check it was 4.1. I weigh 168.8. I'm healthy. I have muscles showing. I have loose skin. And I couldn't be happier. But I'm getting better every day. And I feel like I'm getting healthier every day. And I'm excited for where the future is bringing me. To a point. Everybody has their issues, but... Health-wise, I feel pretty freaking good about myself. So I gotta stop this recording. Thank you for listening to me blabber on and on and on about this crap. If you have any questions, leave them below. If I left anything out, let me know. You can go back to my, I think literally my first video on YouTube. It talks about the same exact thing. But I know people don't always search back. So I just wanted to reintroduce myself and... This version of me, I want to show you guys. This is me at 36, about to be 37 in April. Taking charge of my life and my health. With a broke out face that I can't seem to fix. It's better than it was. But this is my major problem right now, is my face. As you can tell. Somebody come fix my face. Um, But just follow, you know. Let me know what you thought. Um, that's everything. I will come in with you guys, uh, come at you guys with another video soon, once I figure out what I want to do. If you have any ideas of what a video you want to see is, let me know. I might get back to my workout check-ins, along with these. I, I didn't mind doing them. Um, ow, I poked at that thing. This thing is annoying, just saying. Um... I, li I love working out, so maybe I'll share it with you guys. But I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me just go on. Then I'll be back with some other videos on some topics. Basically, I'm going to base this on a keto channel. Keto and health. Health and fitness, keto, life, whatever. Whatever we want to talk about here. Thanks for watching. And I will talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.